Welcome to the Potter Blog site, March 24th, 7.30 p.m., 13 inches of snow. We've had uh, airborne readings that were about 50% uh, greater than uh, background, 1.5 times background. Now, lots of times when snow is radioactive, it, it produces uh, much higher uh, airborne readings than uh, rainstorms. Uh, we reported on this uh, last year. And there was a case, I believe, in Grand Rapids, uh, Minnesota, where they had a, an extended bout of uh, high airborne radioactivity. Uh, they didn't understand the cause, but you do now. Uh, so we're going to take a reading here. Uh, right now I've got the, the beta shield on. And take the beta shield off and hold it to the surface of the snow. Let's see what we get. See if it's any higher. Uh, readings have dropped down here, at least airborne-wise, so I don't expect this to be much higher. Uh, this Geiger counter is actually IP67. It's a mil-spec, waterproof, and floats. But uh, I don't want to drop it in the snow because I don't want to decontaminate it. So what I'm going to do here is bust out the handy old Ziploc bag. We'll drop this guy down in the snow for a minute. This is 13 inches of snow out here. Let's we'll see what we come up with. Let's see if it's any higher. Haven't forced it all the way down the snow. So the good news is right now this snow is not reading much above background. And the reason for that is even though this snow was 50% uh, hotter earlier, this storm is actually a mixture of northern and southern jet streams. And so we're right at the point where these two jet streams are coming together, and that's why we're getting this heavy snow. Northern jet stream contains a lot more radioactivity because it comes directly over Fukushima. Uh, southern jet stream contains usually a lot, a lot less activity. And we just did another uh, rad road trip earlier this winter. Another 3,000 mile trip documenting radioactivity down into the south, Alabama and Florida. And we'll be showing that in a little bit. Good night.